Welcome to Motherhood. Whether you're 18 or 80, Dr. Christina Hibbert, clinical psychologist, author, and mother of six, is here to help you through the ups and downs, the joys and frustrations, the new information from experts, and the stories of happiness and heartbreak from real moms. Remember, if you can, tell, tell your mama to listen to. And I'll make everything all right. Here's Christy. Welcome to Motherhood. I'm Dr. Christina Hibbert, here to help you overcome, become, and to flourish in this happy experience we call motherhood. And we sure hope it's going to be happy. That's what we're all seeking, I think, is to find that balance of, you know, the hard stuff in motherhood, but finding the joy in all those moments. And today we're going to talk about that. I know we've, we've had a couple shows talking about finding joy in motherhood, and today we're going to talk about some of the blocks to our happiness and some of the things we can do to overcome those blocks and how we can, you know, just create more happiness really in our role as moms. So I know you're going to want to stick around for that. We have a fabulous guest. And before we get started introducing the show itself, I want to thank you for joining us here on the show each week and for um, joining our Facebook group on motherhood. It's called Growing Through Motherhood, rather, on Facebook. So if you haven't already, be sure to join us there so we can talk and connect about the show a little bit there. And on my website at drchristinahibber.com. There's lots of free gifts and other tools that can help you in your pursuit of happiness, including right now I am doing my um, personal transformation course called Exercise to Mental Health based on my book, Exercise uh, or my book, Eight Keys to Mental Health Through Exercise. So if you're looking for some guidance on that, you can go find some more information about that at my new website, exercise2tomentalhealth.com. Now, as I said, we're talking about happiness today, and I know this is a universal topic that all moms want to learn more about. We're always seeking, what can I do to feel happier? What can I do to overcome my stress, my struggles, my whatever it might be? And, you know, I've been a mom now for 20 plus years. My second son just turned 20 yesterday. I can't believe it. My oldest one's also 20 because, you know, I have a couple of kids that are adopted in there. And um, it's hard to believe I've been at it that long, but I've definitely been through my ups and downs. You know, I can see that pattern where you have certain times of life where it seems like it might be easier to feel that happiness that you want. And then other times where it might feel like it's impossible sometimes to feel that happiness. And of course, you know, you might be struggling with something like depression or anxiety that might be getting in your way, or you might be struggling with um, some, you know, personal challenges in your life or hardships or loss or uh, financial issues, relationship troubles. There's so many things that can get in the way of our happiness. And I certainly want to acknowledge that, you know, these obviously these things are real and it's not like we can just always all feel happy and that that's supposed to be how it is because the truth is it's not really supposed to be happy all the time. It's meant to be hard and challenging and it's meant to help us grow. And that's what we do here in motherhood. That's why we try to grow through motherhood together because it's, it isn't, it isn't always easy. And so how can we do that? How can we find the happiness? How can we create the happiness? Now, one thing I've learned about happiness and I'll just share this at the start to get us going here is a few years back, I made it, a, you know, I have a year, New Year's theme every year. And so a couple years, several years ago, one of my New Year's themes was the theme of joy. And it came after my year of patience and after my year of cheerfulness. And these are things I wrote about in my book, This Is How We Grow. So some of you might know about this, but I really just wanted to feel joyful. And it had been such a long time. We'd been through a lot of hardships as a family and we'd had to overcome a lot. And it was um, just is something I was really actively trying to work on was how do you find joy? How do you feel joy even when life isn't, you know, easy or when you have loss or someone has died or you're going through this hard time in whatever form. And what I realized was that, you know, happiness can come and go, that feeling of happiness. And we're going to talk about that and we're going to use happiness and joy interchangeably today. But that truly joy is something that is deep within each of us. You know, and so that's why, you know, we can dig down through all the muck of life and sort of part the way and we can tap into that joy no matter what's happening in our life. And as moms, especially, I think that a lot of times we do that through our children and through our families and through our relationships with them. 
and that we can connect with them and, and experience those joyful moments that might just be these small moments, but when we tie them all together, they can make us realize we really do have a pretty good and happy life. So today I want to focus on some of the ways that we can do that. Some of the things that do block block our happiness, you know, obviously I mentioned some, but we're going to get into some other things that can just get in our way daily and also how we can overcome them. So I want to welcome to the show, Becky Squires, welcome, or Becky Squire, sorry, welcome to our show, Becky. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here. Now I found Becky, I came across you on Instagram just randomly one day and I saw a post that you did recently about seven, let's see, seven truths hindering your happiness. Is that what yes, called? exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I read through it and I thought it was fabulous. And I invited you on the yeah. show because I wanted you to be able to talk about some of these things because I really think all of our listeners can relate. Thank so, you. yeah. So let me tell all of you out there about Becky a little bit. So Becky is a wife and a mom. Yeah. She has mm -hmm. four kids mm -hmm. between the ages of 12 and five. Yes. Yes. Three boys and a girl. We just talked about this. Uh -huh. <laughs> so she's in the thick of it too, as, as yeah, we all are. For sure. <laughs> in addition to that, she's also a dreamer, a writer, <laughs> a runner, and a cheesecake maker. I wish I lived close yes. to you because oh, I do love cheesecake. <laughs> yes, it's, I too make bad. a good one. <laughs> oh, man, I bet you do. Okay. <laughs> Um, she says her husband is her soulmate and complete opposite in almost every way. I can relate yes. to that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, their kids also keep them humble and tired like we all are, yes. right? Absolutely. That's why my office is my bed. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I know what you mean. Sometimes it's the only place you can get some quiet, right? Yeah, the door. Exactly. And she also says that when she's not writing, Becky enjoys running up and down the mountains of northern Utah, baking, traveling, music, and sleep. Oh, yeah. elusive sleep, <laughs> which we all love right now. It is. She's also a freelance writer, and she blogs at makeminehappy.com. So that's her blog. So you can yeah. check that out, which is a really, I love that title. It just wants Thank you. you. To makes you want to go and read your posts. And oh, you can find you. that post I was talking about too, which is one of her more recent ones um, on makemindhappy.com. And also she is soon to release a brand new ebook called 28 Days to Hashtag Relationship Goals. <laughs> Hashtag. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you can check that out. You can find that um, before it's even launched on makemindhappy.com slash ebooks. Yes, it will be launched to the end of January, but for you listeners, you can uh, get it early, so it's all ready for you. Yeah, so if you hear this before the end of January, you can go check it out, and if it's after, you can still check it out on makemindhappy.com. Awesome. Okay, so Becky, let's just jump right in. Let's do it. So first of all, I wanted to um, just touch on some of the things that you mentioned in your post about that you found that hinder our happiness and maybe mm -hmm. what prompted you to want to write a post like this. Um, and we can just, I have them all pulled up here. I'm just going to go through some of them and then we That's can great. kind of focus on some of the things that you have found that help, that could help mm -hmm. us to overcome some of these things. Okay. So, so what, you know, what, what made you decide to uh, write a post about the things that block our happiness? Well, um, I have been writing for a few years now and I have found that a lot of the, um, the, the post titles that will grab people's attention are often negative and yeah. I don't like that at all. I don't. And, um, you know, like, why is my husband, why do you think your husband is cheating on you or just things like that? And, and, and it does get people's attention, but I really don't like to focus on the negative. So, um, so I've written a lot of posts about how to, you know, be happy or, or love yourself, um, or serve others. And at the same time, those don't get a lot of attention. So I kind of tried to, you know, go the other way without being negative. Yeah. I'm just saying, well, what is hindering your happiness? What are those things that are keeping you from being truly happy? Yeah. Um, so that's a, good, that's a really good point. And I, I'm totally with you on that. I hate that it seems to be the negative, the yeah. really horrible things or the <laughs> hard things that seem to get the most attention. But yeah. but I love your spin on it. It's really showing people what they can do to be happier by showing them exactly. what might be blocking your happiness. So, so let's touch on some of those. So the first one, you're not choosing happiness. I mean, it really is a choice, right? right? Yes, it is a choice. I mean, it, it sounds so simple. But it's true, like you can wake up every day and you can choose happiness. And sometimes it's um, subconscious, you know, we, we don't think, oh, I'm going to be unhappy today. 
But um, if we do consciously tell ourselves, you know, every single morning, every day, every minute, you know, I can choose how I respond to the, to each circumstance, mm-hmm. um, and I'm going to do it in a positive way, then that will do worlds of wonder. Yeah, absolutely. It's a mindset that we can start, like you say, start each day off. And if we don't start the day off with, we can change our mind throughout the day. Right. right? You can always change it. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And now, um, so let me ask you this real quick, since we're talking about choosing happiness. I mean, is that something that you try to do in your life? I'm guessing you, you mean your blog is oh, make yeah. mine happy. So, you know. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I've always felt like I'm a pretty naturally happy person. You know, I, mm-hmm. um, I try to look for the good in things and I know that that doesn't come easy for some people. And so that's kind of why I made my blog to help others, um, overcome those things that, that don't help them to, to be happy or, you know, if it comes harder to them, that's what I want to help them with. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Okay. So we can choose happiness. Another one of your suggestions here is that less is more. Yes. Okay. So, um, I mean, this is something that, that personally me and my husband have, you know, done and and I can guarantee that all of you probably have too, Mm -hmm. is, you know, oh, if I could just get this raise, or if I could just get this promotion, or if I could just get a bigger house, then I'll be happy and, you know, end of story. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't work like that. I, I remember when we lived in um, in a two-bedroom condo before we lived in this house, and, and we lived there for three years, and every single day, I, I hated it. And I was like, I can't live here. You know, I need room. I need a yard. I need a garage. Um, and all of these things, and then I'll be happy. And so now we have our house and of course, you know, what did I do? Well, I need a three car garage now, you know, (laughs) I need, I need a a bigger kitchen with, um, an ice maker and I need a (laughs) jetted tub, you know, it, it never ends and it will never end. And unless you tell yourself I'm happy, you know, where I am right now. Mm Mm-hmm. I love that. And you say in your post today, when things aren't adding up in your life, start subtracting. Yes, exactly. That's great advice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And simplifying can be a really good plan for happiness too. I think, I think, you know, when you talk about less is more, not only with our stuff, but definitely with our time, right? Yeah. Can I I just say something about Mm -hmm. that? Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. I've got something in my throat. It's okay. Um, I, so I've, I've got four kids. I want them to have fun, fulfilling lives. So I, you know, we sign them up for, for uh, piano and dance and sports and all these things. And last year I was finding that every single night, you know, I was, I was away and I had to split up my kids and my husband was here and I was here. And what did I feel? Just stress. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, you know, and they, they feed off of that too. They feel that stress. Mm-hmm. And so this past fall, um, one of my kids said, Oh, am I going to do soccer? Am I going to do basketball? And I said, no, you're not. Um, piano is one thing that they don't have a choice. So that's always Mm -hmm. on the docket. But, um, but I said, we're not going to do any extracurricular activities this fall. And we were home. I was home with my kids every single night. And my husband, we played games and we just had dinner together and never before have I enjoyed spending time with my kids so much. (laughs) I mean, you moms know how it is, you know, you, you you have, you know, you do all these things with your kids and you're like, oh, I just want time to myself. But when I was actually just home with my kids doing nothing, yeah. I, I just wanted more and more and, and I didn't want them to leave. And, and of course, you know, we're back to some of the things because I want my kids to be able to, you know, have their passions in life and things like that. But yeah. I think it's important to not do too much. No, I, I totally agree. And I appreciate you sharing that story. Cause I do, I, I agree that probably so many of you out there, I've been through the same thing. I know I found myself when we had our six kids and when they all were old enough to be in activities, it was like, okay, that's like, like they all do music or piano and they were in scouts or some kind of activity like that. And it's expensive. It's expensive. It's time consuming. And then they want to do sports and then they want to do this. And I used to say, okay, you can pick one thing that you're going to do and then you can do your music and that's it. Because if we each did two or three things, that's 12 to, you know, 16 to 18 activities a week. That's crazy, you know? And that's kind of our rule of thumb in our home is to have them, besides piano, they get one other activity at a time. So if it's seasonal, then they can do something else. But um, 
you know, they can't add on top of that. And, you know, you just, you guys do what works for you. Absolutely. Of course. But if you're feeling stressed, like, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think that's great. Great advice. All right. Another one of these ideas on your blog post was you're looking instead of seeing. Right. So, so that just kind of has to do with um, always looking ahead, looking at the future. Again, looking at what, you know, what could I have that would make me happy? What do you have that makes you happy right now? You know, count your blessings. You know, I've, I could, (laughs) I could complain about a lot of things in my life right now, but what good is that going to do? Absolutely no good. Mm -hmm. And so start seeing what you have. You know, we have our help. We have a warm, safe home. You know, we've got our education. We've got each other. There's so many things. The list could go on and on. So see the good that you have and be grateful for it. Exactly. Instead of always wishing for something else. Right. And I'm going to share one more because I want to keep a few so people will go to the okay. post and check yeah, it out, right? For sure. But one other one that really stood out to me that I thought was really helpful <clears throat> is that it's not your circumstance, it's that you're thinking about it. Yes. So this the dreaded is something... thinking about overthinking, right? <laughs> right. Well, it's just something that I've learned just in this last year. And can I tell you that it's like changed my life. Um, Good. Circumstances will happen. Things happen out of your control. Yeah. But what you do have control over is how you think about it. Right. You know, if if something devastating happens, you know, I'm trying to even think of an example. Um, I'm trying to look on my blog if I have an example on here. Um, it's just all in your mind. You know, the biggest yeah. obstacle to overcome in life is your mind. Yeah. And if you can overcome that, then you can be happy and you can do anything. So, so true. Because truly, it's about perception. I mean, it really exactly. is. Everything is. Yeah. You can have two people in the exact same circumstances, you know, two kids in the same family that see oh, things totally differently. Right. right? And so it really is the way that you think about things. And it, that is so important. And the great thing about that is that we can change how we think, too. Right. It's in our, it's in our control. Yay. We love that. We love it when it's in our control. Yeah. We want to have control over everything. But I know. Not possible, but you, you can you have control change your over thinking. Yourself. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. So let's talk about that. Let's kind of focus into that about intentional thinking. I mean, that was one of your suggestions about how we can be happier as moms. And um, let's let's talk about, you know, how we can start putting more intention in our thoughts each day. So one thing that I found that also kind of changed my life um, as a mother is you, you decide what things make you a good mom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Does feeding your kids a healthy dinner make you a good mom? Mm -hmm. I can't answer that for you. For me, no, it doesn't make me a good mom because there are going to be days, a lot of days where they don't get, you know, their, their fruits and vegetables as much as they need or, or whatever it is. Um, so for me, mine are, do I love them? Mm. You know, no matter what? Yes. Um, do I protect them? Always? Yes. And do I teach them? Yes, I do my best to teach them. So those are my three things mm. that I feel make me a good mom. Um, just the other night, I made this fabulous healthy dinner. My kids all enjoyed it. Okay, this is like... <laughs> never happened. Right. You know, they all enjoyed it. They were happy. After dinner, I was talking to my husband. I was like, I feel so good as a mother. And then I stopped and I thought, wait a minute, that's not supposed to make me feel good, but you can go above and beyond. (laughs) You can go above and beyond. That's perfectly fine. And you can feel great about it. But when you don't, you know, do those extra credit things or the extra mile things, you are still a good mom. Yeah. So you make your list. Mine is to love, to teach, and to protect. You make your list of the things that make you a good mom. And when you don't meet meet all of those extra things, you are still a good mom. I love that. That is so, so, so practical and useful. And everybody listening, we can all do this. I haven't done Mm -hmm. this. I I have to say, I've done something maybe similar. Like I I definitely have evaluated um, what kinds of things don't make me a good mom. But right. I, I can't Focus say like, off the top of my head, like you, I can't say these are my top three that make me, that do make me a good yeah. mom. And the list should not be long, by the way. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. 
That's right. And it really is more about those important things. What what matters most, right? What's mm-hmm. the, the right. best thing that you can have and not just the many good things that you could do, but what are the best things that you're going to do that right. are going to really yeah. matter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really important. So everybody out there, so so how did you kind of come up with that? Did you just ask yourself that question? What is it? What does it mean to me to be a good mom and kind of just come up with um, three answers? Yeah, I just, just like you said, you know, I, I've always said, oh, this doesn't make me a good mom or when I do this, you know, every, there's that phrase mom guilt yeah. and everybody I'm sure has felt mom guilt at one point or another. Um, and I just thought, you know, that's, that's really dumb. <laughs> like we shouldn't, <laughs> we shouldn't feel that because everybody, you know, you know, all my friends, people that I talk to, women who I've talked to about this, we look at them and we say, you guys are such a good mom. But they're telling themselves, I'm not a good mom because of this and this and this. Yeah. And so just like you said, I decided to just switch it around and say, well, what does make me a good mom? Yeah, I love that. And that's a really good point. Um, you know, I want to add to that, that the way your kids act and behave does not mean that you're a good mom or not either. You know, that's right. a biggie. Like, and, and again, that's out of our control. I mean, yeah. kids have their free agency. And I don't know if this is something we're going to talk about later, but um, kids have their free agency you can teach them, right? I can teach them yeah. to be kind and to not be a bully or all these things, but they still have their free agency. And so if they choose to, you know, hit their brother or hit their sister, does that make me a bad mom? No, because right. I taught them the right way. They just have their choice. Right. It's like seeing the mom that has the kids screaming in the store because they want the toy or being the mom right. that has the kids screaming in the, to- in the right. store and you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm the worst parent ever because of how they're acting. Right. But really, you know, I'm just like, good but, for you, mom. Way to stand your ground, you know? <laughs> well, that's what I always think when I see people struggling in a store and I'm sure you're the same way when you see them and all of you viewers, yeah. when you see those moms struggling, do you think, oh, they're such a bad mom? Mm-hmm. No, you probably don't. No. But when that's happening to you, you think, oh, everyone thinks I'm a bad mom. Yeah. So just remember that, you know, people aren't looking at you thinking that they're they're They probably have compassion towards you and want to help you out. Absolutely. And the other important point you just made was how our children do have their agency and they are their own people. And it gets really apparent when they get older. You know, my oldest two that are off on their own and I can't make them do anything anymore. Really, Sometimes yep. I can guilt them into stuff, but I don't really want to do that. Like, <laughs> you know, but really yeah, it's up to them. That works. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's hard. It's hard to let them go and do what they need to do. But that's the whole goal, right? We don't want kids that are, you know, clinging to us for the, right. you know, when they're 40 years old and can't right, live a exactly. life, right? So we, we need to be able to re- recognize that and not tie our worth to what yeah. our children decide, you know, or even right. what our spouse decides or anybody in your family, you know, what, oh. what they're doing in their life. If you tie your worth as a mother or as a wife to other people, then you will surely be disappointed. Yeah, you won't be happy for sure. And yeah. so that's why I love, you know, get get in tune with what you need and you say trust your intuition for that, right? There isn't there right. isn't some kind of rule or guide like this means X, Y, and Z mean you're a good mom. It's totally right, exactly. Personal. It is personal and it depends on your personality. It depends on your child's personality. So, yeah, absolutely. So in addition to kind of that intentional thinking, and I love that, I hope everybody out there will do that, that activity that Becky just suggested to come up with the, you know, three or four, two to three to four to five, you know, not too many, like she said, things (laughs) that in your mind help you feel like you're doing a good job as a mom. And and I kind of like that. I like thinking of it that way. Like I'm doing a good, am I doing my job well? You know, am I right. doing it the way that I want to be doing it versus like, am I totally good or not good as right. a mom, you know? Right. And, so it's and you're not, not going to be, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you're not going to be perfect, yeah. but as long as you're trying your best, like that's all right. that matters. And like you say, it, it's totally different what we might each want. So, okay, get that intentional thinking going so you can kind of check in with yourself. Mm-hmm. And then you talk about diversifying our source of validation. You started talking a little bit, of touching a little bit on that mom guilt. Yeah. And um, how important it is for us to let that go. Because if we want to be happy, truly, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm sure you would agree. But, you know, let me know what you think about this. I really find that most of the times it's we prevent ourselves from being happy. We are really just blocking our happiness because oh. we're holding on to guilt or we're comparing ourselves to somebody else or we're looking at someone on Facebook or Instagram and thinking, oh, they're perfect and I'm so blah, blah, blah or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah, well, you are 100% right. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. So, so how, what do you, what have you found as far as the mom guilt goes? Um, how, you know, some ways that we could help the listeners out there to deal with that if they're feeling that mom guilt. I mean, I agree with you. It's silly that we yeah. feel that way. And we all yeah. feel that way. I'm, I'm sure that yeah, I can't, I can't imagine anybody nature. has never experienced that. Everybody has, right? Right. To some degree, for sure. It's, it's human nature. Um, so when you do feel that, I think I, I, one of the points that I wanted to talk about was that, um, you know, if you put all of your worth into your child's uh, behavior or how they feel about you or, or how they react, um, that's a, a source of emotional manipulation. Mm. And what I mean by that is, you know, if, if my child does something that I don't like, and then I say to them, oh, you did this. You made me unhappy. You made me feel like a bad mom. Then how is that going to make them feel? You know, you yeah. are manipulating their emotions. Yeah. And, and that's just cruel, I think. Yeah. And I'm not saying I've never done that. But, but, um, but, you know, that's where some more intentional thinking comes in. Just stop yourself. And um, if you want to feel like a good mom, you know, You've got to, you've got to, like I said, diversify that validation. You've got to know your passions, um, things that you, that fill your bucket, if you will. For me, that's um, running in the mountains. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't easily get angry, but, or frustrated, but when I do, um, you know, I'll, I'll find time to go trail running mm-hmm. or just even hiking and, then, you know, that fills my bucket. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be going to the gym, it could be sewing, it could be reading a book, Mm -hmm. um, going out to dinner with your friends. I mean, obviously, the the end, the options are endless. Um, But it's important to, to work on yourself and to fill your own bucket outside of your children, sometimes. So Um, let me ask you this, because we, we started by talking about the mom guilt. Then you talked about this idea of, you know, sacrificing our whole life for our kids is emotional manipulation, which I want to get back to. Okay. But tying in the mom guilt to filling our own bucket, what about all the moms out there listening right now that are thinking that it's selfish for us to take that time and that that makes them feel guilty? If they yeah. are taking time, it makes them feel like a bad mom, which yeah, I totally don't is... agree with, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Oh, <laughs> I, I know people feel like that and it's completely not selfish. Because when you don't take time to do the things for yourself, um, you know, you're, it's just going to build. It's going to add up. And that anger and that resentment is going to build. And you're going to take it out on your kids. It's going to happen whether mm-hmm. it's tomorrow or in five years. Mm-hmm. You know, and you're going to lose yourself. And, and, I mean, children obviously are worth all of, all of our time and energy. But if they're not getting our best self, then you know, what are you going to give them? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. If you have nothing, if you don't fill your bucket, you're empty of you nothing. Exactly. You don't have anything to give. So and we're not talking about like getting a huge fancy new bucket and, you know, overflowing no, I mean, it, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'll go running, you know, in the morning and then, and then if I have an idea, like I want to go get a pedicure, that's when I start to feel guilty. I'm like, Oh, I already filled my bucket today. I can't fill it again. <laughs> Um, you know, and so, but, so it doesn't have to be all these things. Don't take Mm -hmm. advantage of it, Right. but take time every day, even if it's just a quiet, you know, bath by yourself or whatever it is, Absolutely. take that time to, to recharge. Yeah. Because how can you be happy if you're, you know, depleted all the time? You know, if we don't replenish ourselves, it's like trying to type on the computer screen that's frozen and you're just trying to force it to work. And then, I mean, I feel like that all the time where I'm just like typing on the computer screen and I know we need a break. When you feel like that, you need a break. And hopefully we can get to the point where we recognize before or we build it into our daily life. So you don't have to feel like that all the time, you know? Yeah. And it might take some practice, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm a big believer. And we talk a lot on this show, pretty much almost every episode, it seems like self-care comes up in some way. Because yeah. whatever we're doing, it's so important, and we moms are not the best at it. You know, we need to it's get better so at important. it. so important. Now, I want to go back to that idea of um, how sacrificing our life for our kids is emotional manipulation. I, I, you mentioned that. You talked a little bit, but I really want everybody to hear that point because I've never heard it put that way. And I, I think, you know, I think it's kind of an interesting way to see it. I, I mean, I agree with that. I think it's a really yeah. interesting way. So tell us a little bit more about that. Like, how did you come up with that theory or that idea? 
Um, well, I, I actually got it from uh, um, a podcast that I listened to um, mm-hmm. by Jody Moore. And she called it emotional manipulation. And I just thought that was so true because, you know, when we, and it's, and it's not just our thinking, but it's when we actually, you know, tell our children, I am sacrificing my life for you so you can have a happy life. So you can have these things, you know, or whether it's like money, you know, I am going broke because you can play sports and you can do this and that. Um, are you wanting your children to feel sorry for you? Like, yeah, maybe, maybe you are subconsciously, but when you think about it, like children don't need that burden. Yeah. They shouldn't have that burden. And so it's m- emotional manipulation. Yeah. And I think many of us have been there before. And I know yeah. that, you know, for me, I can think of this as an example from many years ago when I was trying to you know, kind of just deal with all this. We had just inherited my nephews. We went from three to six kids and it was a crazy time. And I was trying to like, just deal with life. And I, I stopped though. And I was trying to imagine my funeral and what my kids would say about me. And I realized they would probably say that my mom sacrificed so much Uh for us because that's how I was acting at the time. I was just like, do you realize what I'm doing for you? Do you guys see what I'm doing for you? You know, because I I was sacrificing a lot and it's true. I was, but I didn't need to be pointing it out. And I mean, I know it in my head, but I still say it. (laughs) Exactly. Right. But, but what this did help me to do was I don't want my kids to be, that's not what I want them to remember me for. I want them to think I was fun and I want them to know that I love them and that we had great memories and I was happy and yeah, I taught them how to live a good life and how to be a good person and these kinds of things. And I thought, well, if I want that, then I better change myself, you know? So Mm -hmm. it really does come back to that, you know, making sure that we're not putting our life on hold because when we do that, we're not necessarily going to be living the kind of life that we want our kids to see us living either so that they won't get that from us. Like if we're not happy, um, Mm -hmm. they're not going to know what it's like to live a happy life if we don't show them how. Exactly. You You have to enjoy life. (laughs) Yep, absolutely. And some of these things that we're talking about are really important to do that. So constantly filling your own bucket. Mm -hmm. And kind of to, you know, one last point for us to kind of discuss here before we start to wrap up. And this is really important too, is to strive for competence and not perfection. Oh, we've had a whole show on perfectionism and overcoming it. But it's Uh a big struggle for moms, especially, I think, um, to not think that we have to be perfect in some ways. Yeah. So, um, I, my husband will laugh if he hears this, but I am (laughs) the opposite of a perfectionist. (laughs) I am not (laughs) like just good enough, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and that's actually served me very well in motherhood. Mm -hmm. Um, not so well in other aspects of my life, like school and things like that, (laughs) but that's okay. Um, because in motherhood, you know, (laughs) Our kids, well, is anybody perfect? No. No. But children, I mean, they're learning, right? Uh, My mom, I remember when I, when my mom was um, kind of telling me how to, I was trying to teach my kids to do chores, right? When they were small. And I told my daughter, you know, go clean the bathroom. That's your chore. Mm -hmm. And she like wiped the counter and called it good. And I kind of got mad. I was like, this isn't clean. And my mom was like, well, did you teach her how to clean the bathroom? Mm. I was like, well, no. Well, she's like four years old. So (laughs) I'm like, okay. How's she supposed um, to know what to do? So obviously, like, that was kind of a brain moment for me. But uh, (laughs) but, so we have to teach them. And and even after we teach them, they're not going to have it perfect. Um, But it goes... The same goes for motherhood with how we, with how we parent our children. It's not going to be perfect. Um, we all make mistakes, but is is it good enough? Like that sounds bad, but is it good enough? Yeah. Yeah. Great. See ya. Oh, I love that. And you are blessed to have that, you know, to not have that need to then make it good enough, not good enough. Yeah. I love it. I met, um, once at a conference years ago, there was an author of a book and I think the book was called the good enough mom. And yeah. I just got to sit by her at lunch and talk to her because I was like, I love that title. It's good enough yeah. to be good enough. Oh, I mean, to read it. <laughs> good enough is good enough, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. So what are we really trying for if if we're not living that way? You know, if we're trying for perfection, we're just really going to stress ourselves out. We're going to stress our families out, our kids out. Like you say, that's a great example. 
of expecting something from our kids or our, our, you know, our spouse, our partner, whatever, um, that we haven't even taught them or communicated to them or explained to them. Right. Right. We have expectations and it's, again, it comes back to human nature and we expect our spouse to do this and we expect our kids to do this, but have we really communicated it and made it clear to them? Yeah. Probably not. Right. Absolutely. So since you're not a perfectionist, then how, you know, what are some uh, strategies we could help out our perfectionists out there with? I know that you probably, you know, you don't have to deal with this so much, but like you say, be, uh -huh. just letting good enough be good enough. I think that's really important. Um, I think it's really hard for, I know that it's really hard for a lot of um, women and moms to do that. I think that a lot of, a, a lot of, um, a lot of women and moms really struggle with that idea of letting things be or letting yeah. it go. Yeah. Feel like we it have is. to keep working at it until it's better or, I mean, if not perfect, then at least right. better than good enough. Right. Well, especially in this day and age, I feel like, you know, there's so much competition and, um, you know, we want to be better than that other kid so we can succeed and we can excel, but just find your own strengths and work on those. I mean, I'm not my son, for example, and I, I just wrote a blog post about this, um, hasn't launched yet, but he, he's so smart, but he, um, is not competitive at all. You know, we put him in sports, we put him in all these things to, as parents of, of boys do and girls, but yeah. we had these dreams and expectations that he'd be this great athlete and he could care less, yeah. you know? And so, and so he would play soccer and he would chase the butterflies. And at first I was <laughs> like, Oh my gosh. You know, especially my husband was just like, I can't take this, but you know, Oh, well, he's not into soccer. Great. So yeah. let's find something else for him to do. And, and even if, you know, they, they've got their own passions and they're not, they're not doing it as great as the next door neighbor. Are they doing good enough? Are they trying their best? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Good enough. Yeah. And that's, this is such an important point because what you're also touching on is when we can't let ourselves be just good enough or competent and that be okay, then we're sending mm -hmm. the message to our kids that it's not okay for them either. Right. Right. Like yeah. if they get, if they work really hard and only get a C or whatever grade, um, and you know, if we teach them that they have to be perfect or whatever, they're going to always be trying to live those standards that are unrealistic and those expectations that are going to drive exactly. them crazy. Right. 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 And I'm sure that many of you have been there, yeah. you know, trying to meet those expectations and feeling stressed and frustrated. Yeah. Let's not put that on our kids. Yeah. Yeah. So really, I mean, really what we've talked about today, it all goes back to ourselves. I mean, it really does. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, no one can make you happy. It's true. Yeah. And especially as a mom, you can't expect your family to make you happy or your kids. Or nope. like you said earlier, you know, there might be that glorious moment when they actually all love the dinner or everybody's yeah. actually getting along or whatever it might yeah. be. Once in a blue moon. <laughs> exactly. But that is not the norm and we can't expect it to be. I think so many of us look at our lives and think, well, it's not the way I think, see it in my head. So I, I'm not happy, you know, or right. because they're not acting this way that I think they should, or they didn't do this, or, you know, they didn't help me with this, whatever it might be. Um, we let that get in our way. But as we're saying, you know, intentionally thinking about what we want, choosing to be happy, being able right. to change our thoughts when they're not being helpful, trust our intuition, have that picture in our head that's realistic of what really, really matters. Versus yeah. that glorified Instagram photo that yeah. we think our life should be, which yeah. is another problem for competition yes. and stuff too. I mean, really. And let me tell you, everybody, oh. I have to tell you because I do have clients and, you know, people that I get to know in more personal ways because of, you know, my mm -hmm. job. And I see them on Instagram and I see them on Facebook and whatever. And I'm telling you, it is not matching up to reality. Nope. So. Not that everybody's fake on there. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we get, you know, it's just yeah. a picture. It's a snapshot and, of a moment of life. That's it. And exactly. And a lot of times people, you know, they'll put those those perfect moments on social media yeah. and because it helps them, yeah. you know, and that's great. If it helps you, do it. It's yeah. not fake. Right. You know, I, I'm not going to say, oh, here's all the negative parts of my life world. Why don't you take a I look? I know. Sometimes 
I want to, but I don't like being negative. But I kind of want to just be like, see, yeah. look, my day is crappy too, okay? It's yeah. not all perfect. But at the yeah. same time, you don't want to be negative. So yeah. it's, if, it's if you want to see that, you can look at my Instagram <laughs> stories that last like there 10 you go. seconds. Yeah. Then, <laughs> exactly. But the, the, the stuff reality. I post is, is the pretty stuff. <laughs> it looks pretty. Exactly. So everybody, we're both admitting it here. Yeah. I mean, it's just the way it is. That's, you, you just don't put all the ugly stuff online. No. So. We need to be striving for competence, not perfection, working on filling our own bucket and making sure that we overcome that guilt. Because really, Mm -hmm. I don't think that the guilt and the happiness can coexist. No, they can't. Yeah. So let go of the guilt. And if you're really struggling with that, I know we can talk more about that on other episodes, but I think we got some good ideas here today on how to let go of that, to be more realistic about what we really want and what really matters to us as moms, right? Yeah. So thank you so much for being here, Becky Squire. It's so great to have you. I know our time just flies. We could talk about this forever, I'm sure. I know, I love it. (laughs) But everybody, please go check out Becky's blog. I mean, again, makeminehappy.com. I love that title. It just makes you feel happy. It makes you want to go there and be like, okay, how can I make mine happy, right? So that's what you're trying to help us do. Uh Uh-huh. And check out her new ebook, 28 Days to Hashtag Relationship Goals. And you can find that at makeminehappy.com slash ebooks. And yes. eventually it'll just be on the website too. But for yes. early sneak peek, you can go there yep. and check that out. And Becky, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It was so fun. So great to talk to you and get to know you. And for Thank everybody you. else out there. Oh, and what's your Instagram so people can follow you there? Um, It's Make Mine Happy. There you go. Make mine happy. Go find her on Instagram too. And for all of you out there, thanks for joining us here each week on motherhood to grow through motherhood together. Cause we know it's a lot better to do it together with like-minded people like us than to do it alone. And I'm glad that we get to do it together each week here on motherhood radio. So we'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.